watching college basketball on ES from Monroe, Louisiana. It's the 0-2 Grambling Tigers visiting the 1-1 one one ULM Warhawks. And this is the Sun Belt on ESPN. Welcome inside Fent Ewing Coliseum. I'm Chris Harris and joined by former ULM men's coach Mike Vining. Well, just 24 hours ago, we were right here inside Fent Ewing Coliseum. And last night, Davion Buster provided the number one play on Sports Center. <laughs> it was the number one play everywhere. You know, the game was 40 minutes, but it was actually take, took over in, in four seconds at the end. And it was his first game back, missed the first four games, all conference last year. He showed why last night. Heartbreaking 63 60 loss for the ULM men last night, but kudos to Davion Buster. Here's a look at the history between ULM and Grambling. Women's basketball action, 13th overall meeting. Grambling leads the series 8-4 to four, as ULM is 2-4 and four here in Monroe. They last met in 2017. That was a Grambling 61-52 win. So it's been a couple of years since these two teams have played. The last win was a neutral side game uh, in Starkville back in 2004. For Grambling coach, they haven't played in 10 days. And, of course, this game was supposed to tip yesterday at noon, got pushed back to two because the COVID test results were delayed. How does that affect the, the game tonight at all? Well, it could affect both teams. You know, both teams got ready to play. They were pumped up. Grambling, actually, most of them came over here and had to turn around and go back. First of all, they tried to move it from 12 to 2. Still didn't get it cleared, so they had to move it till tonight. And so now they made that trip. It affected their preparation. You know, they thought they were going to be playing. The coaches had to change everything, go back to practice, get to shoot around, and then get cranked up to come back again today and try it all over again. But we're here. We are here. Here. Here's the lineups for today's game. It'll be Vince Scheich, Crockett, Goins, Williams, and Brinsby for head coach Brooks Donald Williams. It'll be Holt, Morrow, Coleman, Paramore, and Forte for the Tigers of Grambling under head coach Freddie Murray. You know, they got the tip, and they're, they're, they're being very uh, slow uh, moving the ball around. I mean, not slow, cautious. Uh, making sure that everybody touches the ball and get off to a good start, which is a good idea. Justice Coleman takes the first shot. It was no good. A battle down low. Jasmine Forte had it, but it'll go back the other way. Holt, Morrow, Coleman. There you see Paramore and Forte, the starting five. Two seniors, three juniors, a veteran lineup for Grambling. It is, you know, in Fort. You know, 4 6 3, she come down with her and going, come down with a rebound together. So it was a jump ball. It was their possession. And Shank misses the three. She starts alongside Williams, Brimsey, Crockett, and Goins. As you see, the one freshman, you'll see several of those seven freshmen and total of eight newcomers, including Kiera Brimsey, who made her ULM debut on Sunday and scored 15 points. She, she made it count. You know, she, she set out last year, and she missed the first two games this year with, uh, because of an injury. But she came out and really, really did well. She had 15 points in that game. Drive to the bucket by Alexis Holt. Doesn't produce. The putback doesn't go. Here comes ULM. They want to push the tempo, Coach. And there's Brimsey taking her first shot, but it wouldn't fall. But I think the game plan for Coach Brooks Donald Williams is to push the tempo against this grambling defense. Yes, they, they want to get it out and, and go with it. You know, they feel like they can on them and uh, you know uh, Brimsley just pushed it down the floor then and they shot missed and uh, somebody tipped it out and she picked it up I think they're resetting the shot clock right now to make sure it was set right there's Freddie Murray six years coaching at Grambling fifth season as the head coach took over his interim in 2016-17 as there will be a, our first foul of the ball game that's committed against Van Schaik on Morrow Back to Freddie Murray, 2017. They won the SWAC title, number 15 seed in the NCAA tournament. They lost to the two seed Baylor. Brimsey going to take the three, her second shot. That one way off the mark. And ULM has missed their first three shots. Yeah, she had that shot. It was a good, a good shot for her. He just didn't, uh, he just didn't get it to go in far. And then she's pushing it up again. You know, they felt like that they could beat them down the floor. Uh, just by sprinting after they get the rebound, and uh, that's that's what they're trying to do right now. They just hadn't been able to take advantage of it. They've got the shots. It just hadn't gone for them. Pass across court intended for Holt. Out of bounds, and so ULM gets it right back. There's Brooks Donald Williams, 
in her second year as head coach, named head coach back on April 9th last year, second season. She's done wonders in recruiting. Of course, the eight-gal recruiting class and a lot of winners in that recruiting class. And then for next season, she's got another really good recruiting class. Uh, she's already in place, so she's looking forward to next year, too. Offensive to the foul. bucket and an offensive foul. Linda Van Schaik steps in front of Leah Morrow and takes the player control foul. Here we are, just over two minutes in, still looking for our first bucket. You know, that's, that's Morrow's second foul. She's got two on her already. Ariel Williams checks in for the first time. And Sassy McDowell, who really had a great game on Sunday, just missed her first double-double, eight points, and a season-high 12 rebounds. A new early career high for the freshman on Sunday. Here the self checks in as well for Grayson Williams, who had the turnover. And Scheich misses, and here comes Grambling, still looking for our first points. Feet across the block and the finish. They're pushing on up the floor, too. Is good. From Willard. Is that Coleman had that? That was Coleman. There's Whitney Goins making nine consecutive games for Whitney Goins. She's knocked down a three-pointer. Doing what she does. The scoring. <laughs> Three, two is your score as we finally get our first two points. And now five in total in the first uh, three minutes. You know, sometimes Whitney step out and take that three quicker and she'd take the layup. Holt fires a three. It's good. So it's raining. Threes inside Fant Ewing. Alexis Holt off to a great start from three-point range. Now five for her first nine. Self, who's now a, really a veteran, has a sophomore on this roster as point guard, gives it to the junior Brimsey. And she's yet to make a field goal, but she's yet to make a field goal, but there on the glass was Sassy McDowell. Now Brimsey again and a blocking foul. Count it. And heading to the line, looking for that old fashioned three point play is Brimsey. Yeah, they got the, the rebound out to her, I and mean, she's going to take it to the goal. She's very aggressive. It was uh, Justice Coleman who tried to step in and take the charge, but she didn't quite get there. And uh, Ramsey heads to the line. Yeah, Ramsey did a good job of trying to change directions to keep from hitting her and it only hit part of it. I think that helped her get that call. Four for five so far on the season at the free throw line. But the goggles going today. Missed the free throw so she can't complete the three-point play we're still tied at five looking for that bounce pass down low they really like to play those four or five guards they do have a post in the game right now and they turn it over here's Goins for three it's no good transition for Grambling and a strong drive and a finish Williams by Ariel took, Williams yeah, she just took it she's doing the same thing as Brandon did she's gonna get it and go with it you know, if you, can, if you can beat them down the floor or run with them before they get down and turn around to face you, you have a chance to just take it all the way. Rambling likes a more low-scoring contest as Garabest Self misses her first shot. And the rebound comes out to Paramore. Long pass across. You know, uh, Garabest was in such a hurry to get back on defense to, to keep them from running out. Uh, she could have got her own rebound. It came right to her, but she left. Paramore runs into... Van Schaik, and she'll be whistled for the foul. That's the first team foul against ULM so far as more subs check in. Iron Washington and Sadie Williams. Two freshmen get their first uh, opportunities of the day. You know, Alexandria came in for Gramlin. Checking in for Forte. Baseline jumper on the way, rims in and out. He's by Coleman. She was their leading scorer, or the leading scorer coming back from last year. Off to a little bit of a slow start offensively this year. There's Kyron Whittington, who started the game against Arkansas, came off the bench as she drives in, and she does commit the player control foul. The number four that just came in for Grambling and got that uh, rebound on the other end <laughs> is DeAndre Alexander, one of my former players' his daughter. She is from Arcadia. She went to Louisiana Tech and then transferred to Grambling this year. And this is her first game to play this year. 
you had a chance to uh, visit with DeAndre. How cool is it to come back and see your former players or maybe seeing their daughters play now? <laughs> Makes you old. <laughs> but DeAndre, he and I stay in, in uh, contact a, a lot. Uh, he actually got into politics at one point. He was on the city council over there, ran for mayor, but he's back uh, teaching school. He was coaching at Arcadia, but we, we stay in touch all the time. And he told me his daughter was going to be playing. And he wasn't going to be able to come yesterday because of noon. He was at work, but he's here tonight. We'll see how many resemblances DeAndrea has of DeAndre. As the ball deflected out of bounds. And that takes us to our first media timeout. A little bit lethargic early on. Of course, the game scheduled for yesterday. Pushed back to tonight. Grambling enjoying a two-point lead. Or Christian Creed is all you need. If you're going to make one call, make it count. Call Creed and Creed today. Well, for Grambling, off to an 0-2 start. Coach Freddie Murray's club, but Coach Vining, it was a 90-47 loss at Florida. Tough to start your year there, but then at Louisiana Tech, they played well. It was just a 79-69 loss, and of course now, 10 days later, they're playing for the first time. But, you know, that, that was a good game they played at Louisiana Tech, and it's, just, it's a drive across town, and it's a good rivalry, so they show they're capable of really playing because Louisiana Tech's always a power. And Shank pulls down the rebound for ULM. And some help. 7-5, a little bit of a uh, sluggish start here for ULM. What's some things you're taking away the, from these first uh, six minutes? Well, I think Gremlin is throwing them off balance a little bit by picking them up real quick on the, on the uh, defensive end. When uh, ULM gets the defensive rebound, they're picking them up. Great drive, and then a good job by Goins to locate Diamond Brooks, who plays for the first time in this ballgame, coming off the bench, trying to get those feet back under her. That was a great finish. It was. You know, she got the ball to her, and, and that was a difficult pass to get through there, and she got it and, and was able to score. Alexander with it. They're working around the perimeter now. Three from the corner on the way, and way too strong. That was from Chairs, who checks in. Yeah. Now a steal yep, by that. Morrow. She'll drive and finish. You know, they're just not trying to take the ball away from you. They're giving you a chance to give it to them, and that's exactly what ULM just did. Apologies, that was Ariel Williams with the steal and the bucket. Three turnovers for ULM, four turnovers for Grambling so far. Both teams struggling shooting the ball. Three of 12 for ULM, four of 13 for Grambling, and another turnover for ULM as here comes Garabeth Self into the ball game again. Diamond had, had got her girl on her hip and was looking looking for the pass and looking for the lob, and it was just a little strong, and she wasn't able to get to it. But they are looking at the post, you know, and that's what that's what uh, Coach uh, Brooke Williams said about it. Uh, they're going to go play five guards. We're going to hurt them by going inside with our bigs. Old drives in. Now Williams has it. Guarded by McDowell over there. This is Coleman. Pressure defense, shot clock down to five, three from Holt, and it's good. So Holt knocks down Grambling's second three, and their largest lead now is five. 12 7 with two and a half to play in this first quarter. Goins answers on the other end. That was a great drive, and she's getting a lane to penetrate really whenever she wants it. She's, I think they're, they're looking more her to, to either spot up and shoot the three or pass it, and she just took it to the goal. Holt has it. Rambling team, really now a five-guard set, Coach. It is, and, and they they move around. She just travels trying to go to the goal. But, you know, Holt, you, she hit that three last time. She's got their two threes for them this game so far. Donald and Johnson checks in for the first time, as well as Candace Paramore. Donald and Johnson getting her first playing time of the season as well. Kira Best Self taking over at the point. Right now for ULM, Van Schaik on the floor. Sassy McDowell, Diamond Brooks, and Goins as Brooks couldn't get it, gets it back. Her right-handed hook is too strong. There's McDowell, had 12 <laughs> boards on Sunday, and that was a great offensive she rebound. She just went after it, got it, and put it back in. That was a great follow-up. You know, she could have stayed out there and watched her try to get back on defense, but she went to the boards and pulled it down. Team captain at Delhi High School, a foul on the drive there by Paramore. And she'll be rewarded with some free throws. I believe it's the first free throws of the game for Grambling. It will be. As a team, they're a 63% shooting percentage.
shooting team. Both of these teams early in the season shooting below 40%. ULM right at 39%, Grambling at 36%. And Paramore knocks down the first free throw. She's now 11 for her first 15 at the charity strike this year. Seems like Coach should, Brooks Donald Williams is trying to find the right combinations. And really, for a lot of the year, it may just be who's hot at the moment. Well, that's part of it. But the, the other thing is uh, getting them some experience at, at, during all phases of the game, early, late. Uh, you know, she played 12 players the other night. And just giving them a chance to get in, uh, have a little bit of experience, and then come out and she can talk to them. So they're not just going long periods of time and without any instructions. So she's really trying to teach as she's going along with this group. Here best South, the reigning Sunbelt freshman of the year. Knocked that ball out of Williams' hand, out of bounds, and the lob Paramore runs it down right near that mid-court stripe, saving a turnover as we near that one-minute mark here in the first quarter. Rambling maintaining a lead. They're up by three. You know, I know they were concerned about the uh, the guards finding somebody for, for Diamond Brooks to guard, but she's got uh, uh, Alexander out there so she can keep up with her. She's, she's actually a, a post player or a four. So they're making it difficult to make that first pass. Uh, Parmore's doing a good job of that. Going's pass looking uh, maybe for McDowell across the block is deflected out of bounds. And that was deflected out there by Donalyn Johnson, and now the Tigers will take a timeout. Head coach Freddie Murray, a graduate of Jackson State back in 1990. Brooks Donald Williams, she has been real happy on the sidelines so far. Her team trailing by three here in the final minute of the first. Well, you know, you noticed uh, she's got Brinsley out earlier, uh, and, and she was just kind of dominating the ball. She was getting a rebound, or they're getting the first pass, and then taking it down there. And she, she's getting some other people in there to get the movement. The movement. On Saturday, ULM will travel to Northwestern State for Natchitoches and take on them on Saturday. So back in action pretty quickly. Then back here next week on ESPN Plus, Mississippi Valley State at La Tech. And back here again against McNeese State as they get ready for conference play. Goins puts it up and down. I tell you what, Goins is really, really the spark right now for ULM. Well, she's doing a lot more things. You know, I mentioned earlier, she her number one thing is to spot up and shoot the three, but now she's gone inside a couple of times. There is uh, Alexander for the first time. She gets on the scoreboard, Coach. Her first bucket for Grandman. Goins thought about the three. Grayson Williams back in. She tries the three. Off the mark, and here comes Grambling up by three. Final 15 seconds of this first quarter. Ariel Williams will set things up. Paramore. Back to Chairs, who gets a screen. Roll from Alexander at the buzzer. Shot no good. It was blocked by yep. Sassy McDowell. Yes, she got a hand on it. So that will end the first quarter. Here at Fet Ewing Coliseum, Grambling maintaining a three-point lead over the Warhawks. Sunbelt Conference basketball here on ESPN Plus. And it's visiting Grambling on top of ULM here in a non-conference matchup. By three coach, both teams. Six for 16 in that first quarter. There, you know, the difference is that three-point. Uh, Grambling's got two and ULM only has one. We start the second quarter of play. Grambling in the red, ULM in the white. Whitney Goins leading all scorers with those seven points. Shot clock is down to five. This is Holt, Floater off the mark, and Diamond Brooks pulls down the rebound. You have Brooks, McDowell, Goins, Grayson Williams, and then Brimsey in the ball game for ULM to start this second quarter. Yeah, Grambling, as I mentioned it earlier, they're picking up, they're trying to uh, defend that first pass and give ULM a little bit of trouble of making that pass and getting it down the floor and getting set up in their offense. They're still Brooks. trying to go inside. Nice cut to the basket by Brimsey. Running your offense there in Diamond Brooks. She may not be 100% of where she wants to be physically, but 
She is super smart, and that was a great pass. It was. She got it. She was out of her range. She looked for it, and Brimsey just did a great job of cutting to the basket. Brimsey's got four now after scoring 15 in her first game as a Warhawk on Sunday. Loader again by Holt, again off the mark, and there's Whitney Goins with the rebound. They're pushing the tempo. Brimsey. Great pass. Pass to McDowell, and an offensive foul is called against Brimsey. It was Holt that stepped in. No, it wasn't Holt. It was Coleman that stepped in to take the charge. Well, that was a hard hit. It was. Well, you know, Brimsey made the pass and then kept going. She's going to have to slide off to the side or either come to a complete stop. Grambling lost to Florida and La Tech. They'll finally head home on December 21st. They'll play their first five games away from home. That's a rough way to start. You know, ULM felt like if they could get the ball down the floor quick, they could get down before they got, Grambling got their defense set up. Washington hit the five foot 11 senior from here in, in Monroe, Louisiana, played at Wachita Parish High School. And now Hannah Edwards gets the check in in her first uh, appearance of the game. Here at Fent Ewing Coliseum in Monroe, alongside uh, former ULM men's coach Mike Vining. I'm Chris Harris, glad to be with you. A beautiful spring day here in Monroe. You know, you know, Brandy's wanting to, to have a good game here, especially being from Monroe. And you mentioned graduated from Washtenaw High School. She had a great career there. Free throw good. The second one, she transferred in to Grambling from Pensacola State College. Here's that 2-2 two -two, or the, uh, what, is, what kind one, of press two, would you call this? One, the 1-2-2-1? Two, 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 or the 1-2-2? One, two, two. One, two, two. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be hard to beat. Oh. My bad. <laughs> I was thinking of two different presses at once as Sassy McDowell keeps it alive and she'll head back to the free throw line. The foul will be on Jasmine Forte. You know, they start off in, in, in a 1-2-2 one, two, two, and it, it may change like you start to say a 1-2-1-1. One, one, one. <laughs> I, I always like the press where they told the big guy to just go back there and stand at the other end of the floor. <laughs> that was always my favorite. Sassy McDowell at the free throw line. And she misses the first. She was start, she had started the year two for two at the free throw line. Now two of three. The freshman from Del High, Louisiana. And she missed both. Edwards the rebound, and she's fouled. The six foot six freshman, Hannah Edwards from Birmingham at Oak Mountain High School. She's trying to work herself back into shape as well. There's a time where Coach Brooks Donald Williams only had four healthy bodies out of 14. That's on top of the COVID protocol. She had to get managers and coaches to help get on the floor so they could just run a dummy offense just to, to, to teach and work. And, uh, and, of course, as you mentioned, Hannah has been hurt, but she was having a little bit of back problems, and so she's trying to play through that. And uh, she, she's a big old girl, and, and that reach helps her a lot. She can go over people. She blocked shots the other night. And then she's pulling down those rebounds now. She's going to get some opportunities, so she's going to have to hit those free throws. This four straight there. It was one of two. He had three blocks and double-digit rebounds, 11 on Sunday. Here's Steele. It is a steal from ULM's Whittington. And a good job to get it to Grayson Williams. Bounce pass down low for McDowell. Turn around way too strong. Whittington's putback is no good. Whittington trying to wrestle it back again. Four chances. And finally a foul call. Rambling maintaining a lead 17 to 15. They have led all but 19 seconds of this ball game so far. You know, Grambling's head has made three free throws. ULM hasn't made any. Not that they didn't have them. They just didn't make them. We saw how uh, critical free throws can be last night when ULM men went five for 14 and at, then, the, at, the, at the charity strike. Right, and then with four seconds to go, it's tied. It could have, a lot of things could have been done differently if, if they'd have made those free throws. Davion Buss, but they're going to go to the monitor maybe to check on who the foul was on. By the way, I thought it was funny today. Davion Buster was getting up all the love on SportsCenter. Foul is... 
Foul is on Ikenya King. So they had to go back and see who that foul was on. Kiara Crockett checks in for the first time. Well, there was there was such a crowd in there going after that rebound and, and trying to block shots. And a moving screen will be called on Whittington. It's two on her. The foul starting to add up a little bit. Both teams have three team fouls already here in this second period. And yeah, that's Whittington's second. Well, back to Davion Buster. The uh, store, David Busters, tweeted at him today. <laughs> <laughs> they should. They <laughs> said, uh, at, at, with a name like that, he has to be a winner, was David, what David Busters said to him. Grayson Williams, great drive and a finish. The first two for the freshman, Grayson Williams. Grayson coming in from McKinney, Texas. The top homeschool player in the country coming out of high school in Dallas. Grayson Williams has it. We're tied at 17. Chance for ULM to take just their second lead in the ball game. First since it was 3-2 to two after that three from Goins. Yeah, she's just trying to set up. They got Somebody wasn't in the right place. They was waiting. They're trying to go high-low just like they did there and got it inside the Crockett. Kiara Crockett, I don't think she realized she made that shot. <laughs> she was heading back the other way. That was on Justice Coleman. But Kiara Crockett checking in and paying dividends. Had seven rebounds against Louisiana College. Yeah, they set up with that high-low uh, double post, and then they drop down and set the screen and then dump it down from th that high-low pass. Uh, and that's what we're talking about, trying to take advantage of the guards that uh, Gramlin's playing. Breaks the streak of free throws missed as Crockett. Came in only one for four, now two of five, checking in for Grambling 25, Donald Johnson again. Both teams going deep into their benches. They are, and you know, and I think he, they're going to play a lot of people. I know ULM is just like it did, and you know, ULM finally takes that lead. Up by three, the largest lead. One pass from King into the corner. A tough shot and is missed, and Grayson Williams pulls down the rebound for ULM. Coast to coast. <laughs> she went amongst the trees. Edwards, free throw line jumper. Good. <laughs> oh, she's fired up. <laughs> That's what she needs. But she's been too close the to the basket. Look at that she's bench been, for ULM. Yeah, she's got, she's got to step out and shoot. She's been too close to the basket. They, they really pulling for her. They almost fell off the risers over there. <laughs> Gotta watch. This is a close-knit group. They really, really pull for each other. Up to a five-point lead now. Holt has it for Grambling. That's that little floater in the lane as Edwards fouled her going up. And Holt will head to the free throw line. Try and stop this little run for ULM. They're on a 7-0 run over the past minute and a half. Morgan Hill checks in. And then at the end, the Andrea Alexander checks back in as well. Well, mentioned uh, to Arcadia, transfer in from Louisiana Tech. Free throw is good by Holt. Stays perfect at the free throw line this year. Holt has seven points on two of eight shooting so far. Rambling's field goal percentage has dropped down to 29% after shooting 39% in that first, or rather 36% in that first quarter. He gets them both back to a three-point game. Rimsey for three. That's a way air ball. Missed uh, by about three feet. Here comes Holt. Chased down by Hill. And an up and under is good by Alexander, but she traveled before that. I mean, she heard those footsteps coming. The turnover for Grambling is their eighth of this first half. Ooh, Morgan Hill. It's dangerous when you're around that midcourt strike. Right. Yeah, you style it and you pick up one foot and go back down, you could be in trouble. Grayson Williams at the start. Uh, tries. Screen and roll, you know, that just a little bit overhead. That is great. You just got to let her get there. Tough drive to the basket. And a finish for Holt. She has nine now to lead all scorers. 
Rimsey. See, uh, Gretchen needed, needed to go get the ball. And uh, I think she was waiting to see what Brinsley was going to do. And then they were both just kind of looking at each other. Now Sadie Williams travels with the basketball. They were somewhat trying to isolate for Brimsey there at the top of the key. As Sadie Williams will check out of the game when we come back. ULM, they have the lead. It's 22-21 here in Monroe, Louisiana. help you 24 7. what are you waiting for christian creed is all you need if you're going to make one call make it count call creed and creed today well back here at ulm the guys basketball team hanging out last night these ladies supported the ulm men solid crowd it was rescheduled from yesterday noon start then two o'clock then six o'clock tonight 22-21 ULM and coach they cut down on those 10 turnovers and they could have a bigger lead. Yeah, they, they could. You know, if they hadn't been out rebounding them 18 to 14, they would uh, it would it could be difficult. Holt starting to get a little bit hot. She has 12 to lead all scores, had a team best 17 in 29 minutes against La Tech. Yeah, she's just able to turn that corner there and somebody's got to step over and pick her up. Brimsley gets inside. Brimsey will head to the free throw line. Seems like the driving lane is available when ULM wants it so far. Well, they they get in there, they just got to they go out to be able to finish, or they they're drawing the foul and they got to hit those free throws. I mean, if you go to the free throw line and don't make them, you might as well have kicked it out of bounds. It's just another turnover. So Brimsey at the free throw line. The arena goes extremely quiet. She missed the first. Rimsey today now 0 for 2 at the line. She has four points on two of seven shooting. Juco transfer from Tyler Junior College, a native of Natchitoches, Louisiana. You know, she's quick and physical and talented. She can get a shot anytime she wants to. She's got to get the one that, that she's going to score and, and make it count for ULM and keep the other players involved in the game. We are tied. After that made free throw from Brimsey. 23 all. That's a tough shot by Paramore. Alexander trying to get the rebound, but Kira Crockett wins the battle of number four. She'll drive to the hoop. Her shot no good. Went up with that right hand, and here comes Grambling. Yeah, she's got to use her left hand or give it up to let somebody else have it. Three on the way from Williams. Off the mark. Offensive rebound, though, underneath by Alexander. And she's fouled and will head to the line. There was two of them around her. I don't know who the. I'm good to Akira Crockett. Crockett. The senior from Farming, Farmington Hills, Michigan, Independence Community College in Kansas. And here's Alexander's first free throws of the year. And she knocks it down, of course. Coach Vining, you coached. Uh, her father, DeAndre. DeAndre, and he's here tonight. What kind of player was DeAndre for you? He was about a 6'4", 6'5", four man, really, really physical, and could jump out of the gym. He did a great job for us. Goins, as they beat that 2-2-1 two -two press fairly easily, but the shot was missed by Morgan Hill. Rambling by a point. And a blocking foul will be called on Garabeth Self. Checking Candace Paramore. Both teams are in the bonus the rest of this first half. Yeah, that's second. That's a second foul for Seth. You know, we were talking about uh, DeAndre. It, we, we, earlier during the break, we were talking about Baylor. His best game was against Baylor. We beat Baylor at Baylor. And uh, he did a tremendous job there for us. Grayson Williams checks in for Garibeth Self, who has those two fouls. Baylor played... ULM men's next opponent, Stephen F. Austin, last night. It was about a 10-point game at halftime. They pushed it one by over 20, but Baylor also the number two team in the country this year. They are. They're, they're unbelievable. And I'm telling you, Stephen F. Austin has, has done well the last few years. I haven't had a chance to watch them this year, but I know they've done extremely well. It's 2-2-1 two -two press again being put on. Crockett gets it to Grayson Williams. They beat the 10-second clock on the 10-second count. Really tough fadeaway that time, but fouled on the arm was Sadie Williams. And the foul was on number 10, Liam Morrow. 
Third, that's three for her. I'm Brooks checks back in for Sadie Williams. You know, again, the, the, the press is just a, it's just kind of an aggravation press. It's to give you a chance to give them the ball. They're not really trying to take the ball away from you. And, but the other thing the press will do to some teams, it'll speed them up and it'll make them, because they beat the press, all of a sudden they'll come down and shoot too quick. And I think that's what happened just then. Irenisha Johnson will check in. I'm sure she will be battling with Diamond Brooks as the free throw is no good by Sadie Williams. Irenisha Johnson, a six-foot junior from Houston. Missed the second as well. ULM struggles from the free throw line continue. As coach, they are now 2-4-10 to start this ball game. This is Johnson in the corner. Now to Holt. Williams back into the corner to Paramore. Rambling still up by three. Paramore the three, in and out, no good. That would have been a big shot for that them. That was, that was. Crockett the other way, a little bit out of control. And the ball hit the back portion of that backboard, so we'll go back to Grambling. You know, I think it'd be better if Kiara could find a guard. Or a guard needs to come give her an opportunity to give him the ball. You know, she yeah. got it and took off, and then there was a guard chasing her, and she was just breakneck speed. She could have held it up and maybe let somebody else fill that other lane and come up with something out of that. And Shank checks back in for ULM, as well as Sassy McDowell. Holt. Now Johnson fires the three, and she hits it. The six-foot junior knocks down her first three attempts of the year, and their lead is now six. She, yeah, took, she uh, took that one with a lot of confidence. Nearly a, a turnover there. Yeah, she didn't shoot that like it was uh, new to her. Renisha Johnson, no points in five minutes against La Tech. Two points, five rebounds in the game at Florida. Averaged a double-double playing Juco ball last year, Kilgore College. Driving is Grayson Williams, and she missed the Just bunny. Didn't get it over the rim. Got the shot, everything she worked for. Just didn't get it up high enough. <laughs> and there's another three. She's, from found, she's found her spot. <laughs> Irenisha Johnson, my goodness. And a timeout call by Brooks Donald Williams as the lead has ballooned to nine for Grambling here in the first half. It was tied at 23. Now it's 32-23. And that's a nice stroke too, Coach. It is. That, that, that looked like a replay of the first one. She did it twice. You know, ULM's got some shots that didn't able, weren't able to knock them down, missed their free throws, and now they're down nine. That's, that's what happens when you have a chance to score and don't. It's eventually going to come back and get you. Since it was 22-17 ULM, Grambling's on a 15-1 run over the past three minutes and 57 seconds. ULM's missed their last four shots. They haven't scored in two minutes and 22 seconds. This is a big 139 for this Warhawks club. Van Scheich, bounce pass for Brooks. Tough shot, no good, and the rebound pulled down by Alexander. And Grambling, a chance to push their lead to double figures. Tough drive from Holt, or rather by Williams. She's fouled, and a chance to push it to double digits here. Uh, Going picks up her first foul there. You know, just trying to get to her. They're just penetrating and, and going by them. Some, they're going to have some help. They're going to have to keep them in front. I know that's one of the things that Coach really stressed is trying to keep the ball handler uh, in front of you. Don't let them turn that corner. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this has really all started from when they started really getting into that 2-2-1 press. Right, right. They uh, but just picking up, uh, making them throw the ball over them. They're denying the inbounds pass, and you got to get it in the middle. This is what they did there. Now, right now, there should be a three on two, but somebody wasn't filling this lane over here. Van Schaik drives, and she travels. She was going to shoot, and, and then they, they cut her off, and wisely she picked it up and threw it away, but she, uh, threw it out, but she uh, traveled first. So 34 23 is your score. Alongside Mike Vining, Chris Harris, Wayne Gentry. Running things in the truck. Our producer. 
you know, Final minute. The Gremlins being uh, being patient right now, moving around, trying to make sure they get the shot they want, and they do. <laughs> Renisha Johnson coming in like uh, the best player on the team. She's got and, eight uh, points here now. She's nearly their leading scorer. Holt is with 10, but there's Van Schaik. She's a little bit out of control, and she traveled again. This ULM team is in a lot of danger right now. They're out of sorts. Well, you know, the, the first problem is there wasn't a single pass made. You know, you, everybody needs to get involved. You need to get some movement. You've got four people standing watching one move, and then all of a sudden they're down 13 points. Uh, it's going to take all five of them to to get back into this game. <laughs> Renisha Johnson getting a hero's welcome back to the bench. <laughs> well, she deserves it. <laughs> she, she should. She deserves it. Only played six minutes, but eight points on a perfect three for three shooting. Holt has it. Five second differential shot clock, game clock. Thought about that bounce pass. Now a three from Williams rattled in and out. Wow. And that's a couple. <laughs> that's a couple that have done that for them. Chance for ULM to take the last shot. Brimsey has it. Guarded by Holt. Five seconds. Brimsey pull up. Might have gotten hit on the arm. Her shot's no good. Brooks put back and the buzzer is off. And Grambling has a lead of 13 at the break. Yes. ULM just started, uh, just started shooting a little too quick. And I think the press had that effect. So we had to, to the locker rooms, both sides, Grambling ending the half on a 13-0 run. Here at halftime at Fent Ewing Coliseum, it's Grambling 36, ULM 23. And as the half came to a close, it was a 13-0 run for Grambling. And here's a look at our first half stats. Grambling on top in the field goal percentages and really pretty much everything except for the rebounding totals. And, of course, the turnovers proved costly as well for ULM. Well, yeah, you know, those turnovers, and we mentioned earlier, is 13-8. to eight, But off of those uh, 13 turnovers, Grambling has got 15 points, and from the eight, ULM's only got two points out of that. So that's your 13 points difference. Take a look at our first half, our first half highlights. First for Grambling, you see a nice steal, and it really was the guards that took control late in that second half. That was Ariel Williams, and now off the bench, talk about a spark, Irenisha Johnson. I mean, to factor into the ball game, boy, she did off the bench. Yeah, that was her. That was her first two. She she had hit a couple of threes already, so she she came out firing and and was hot. That was the second three. It was even more natural than this first one, as she knocked down and nothing but net. Great form. Those were her first two threes of the year. On the other side, let's take a look at some first half highlights for ULM and. Really, Coach, great early, especially Diamond Brooks off the bench. Yeah, Diamond Brooks got a great pass there and put it back up and and uh, scored for uh, ULM. And then uh, Hannah Edwards pulls up and shoots a little short jumper. She got, uh, got it outside. You'd, you'd expect her to go inside with it, but she put it up. Grayson Williams getting into the lane for a bucket there. And then uh, steal by uh, Brimsey or a steal by Whittington saved it to Grayson Williams. And then eventually Brimsey would uh, get the bucket. Well, Whittington, the backside rebound there. Trying to keep things alive. Now uh, we get to Brimsey. There was the uh, nice look by uh, Diamond Brooks to Brimsey. And, you know, if ULM can settle into their offense, they can get some things uh, going. Right. When they get the ball movement, they're doing real well. That press, that was an issue. It has caused them some problems. Halftime here at Fant Ewing, Grambling by 13. Welcome back here in Monroe, Louisiana. Some women's basketball action. Grambling finished that first half on a 13-0 run. It was tied 23 all, and they have that 13-point lead here. At intermission, alongside former ULM coach, the owner of 402 wins, Mike Vining, Chris Harris with you. 
And uh, let's take a look at what's uh, coming up for both of these two clubs. We start first with uh, the Grambling Tigers. They'll be at UAB on Sunday to take on the Conference USA foe. Then they're back home ending this long road trip. Arkansas State, Southeastern Louisiana. Then they get into conference play with McNeese, Alabama State, and Alcorn. For ULM at Northwestern State Saturday, back home next week against uh, Mississippi Valley State, then at La Tech, back home against Coach Brooks Donald Williams, former team sheet coach from McNeese State, the all-time winningest coach there. Then you see the uh, conference play coach in Sunbelt play. It's Friday, Saturday, home, home, or road, road. It'll be road, road for ULM against Arkansas State playing back-to-back. -back. That's going to be unique. It's just really something different. Play Friday night at 6 o'clock, Saturday afternoon at 4 o'clock, and then you hit the road, and then it, it, you don't you have to get – you don't have to spend a lot of time getting ready again because they're already here, and you're going to do the same thing with them. Scoring drought for ULM goes back four minutes and one second to into that second quarter. Talk about the offense for ULM shooting in that first half, 35%. But it all really starts by the frustration from that 2-2-1 press. It does. They give them, Grambling gives ULM trouble making that first pass. And then they just kind of rotate around. You've got to beat the press in the middle. You've got to pass the ball into the middle of the court and then turn around and you've got to run the floor. And it's causing ULM a little bit of trouble. So when they break through break the press they, they go in across half court full speed and they don't ever slow down and regroup they just take it in there and shoot and you're not looking for the first shot you're looking for the best shot and that press has had an effect even if they don't come up with a steal it's affecting the way ULM is playing once they beat the press Freddie Murray teaches it as good as anybody if your head coach took over his interim in 16 17 they won the SWAC title and lost to Baylor in the first round as a 15 seed in the NCAA tournament. You know, I used to, when we pressed, we, we preached that you don't have to steal the ball you, to come up with it uh, for the press to be successful. If nothing else, you just made them work hard just to get the ball down the court. Rimsey drives, had it deflected and blocked by Coleman. That's how we start the second half. Paramore spots up for three, trying to continue this run. That they've been on the last five minutes, really. Now scoring ULM, Brimsey drives again. Again, she can't finish. The first two shots to her, and both are misses. You go to the same place, and the same thing happens. Williams drives. She can finish. I was afraid she got she got hit there. It looked, looked like she might have had a little contact, but she finished with it. It wasn't an excuse. Now a tie basketball. And jump ball called as Ariel Williams and Grayson Williams get tied up. It'll be Grambling basketball. And now a 15 to nothing run. For Grambling, it was 22 to 17. And since that point, it's been a 22 to one run for the Tigers. And you're getting close to five minutes without a score. Williams open for three, she'll take it. Missed it, probably a reason why she was open. Sassy McDowell can't control the board. And now Alexis Holt. Picks up the loose ball, and the lead is now 17 for Grambling on a 17-0 run. You see, they've got to break into the middle to get that pass, and then they've got to sprint for them to get it back and then take it to the basket. And Goins, along with Garibas South, McDowell, Grimsey, and Brooks in the ball game. You got a lot of your veterans in there with some experience. But you know, Chris, this the things that we're talking about that they're not doing this is a lack of practice uh, that they haven't been able to do because of injuries and because of the virus you know we've talked about you only had four players that you could get out on the floor this is what happens good block by diamond brooks on the other end and brimsey extremely aggressive right now ahead of the free throw line trying to end this long drought that's just over six minutes grayson williams will check in for garabeth self but this game's close to being out of reach, really, for ULM down by 17. It is, you know, and, and if you just continue to drive to the basket and throw it up there hoping that it goes in and continue to miss those free throws, you, you can't close the gap. Storyline in the first half, ULM 2 of 10 from the line. 
That makes him two for 11. Rimsey one for four tonight. Make it one for five as they continue the struggle to tie basketball. It'll be ULM ball this time. But you can just tell, of course, we watched them against Louisiana College and they were having so much fun. And right now they're just trying to find something to get them going in this ball game. Well, it's, it's right now it's almost like they're, they're trying to grit their teeth and make something happen instead of work together, you know, to get all five people moving and let something good happen. They're trying to make something happen. Holt the steal. Her, she misses her shot, but Coleman going up is fouled. And Sassy McDowell fouls her. She was uh, reaching down. Look at the foul called uh, almost every time. Holt leads the way with 12 points for Grambling. And the free throw up and uh, is no good for Coleman, who only has two points, but has played 13 minutes. He was their top scorer returning, averaging 15 points and five rebounds last year. Makes the second, so it's an 18-point game. You do the math, 18-0 run for Grambling here. After we were tied at 23, Sassy McDowell thought about it. Now Brooks on that baseline, and she threw it away. They are just out of sorts and discombobulated right now. Where did she threw it? McDowell had already left, and it looked like she might have got bumped, but uh, Grambling goes down and gets it to the corner, and Paramore just knocks it down. It's like blood in the water for these veteran guards for Grambling. Lead is now 21, and a whistle and a timeout call by Brooks Donald Williams. So a 19-0 run. ULM hasn't scored in eight minutes and some change. We're going Omaha. There it is. Nothing but net. 27 to one run for Grambling. They have ballooned their lead up to 21 at 44-23. Coach Vining, nine minutes since the ULM last score. Yeah, they just hadn't been able to get it go. Uh, they, they've got the shots. They missed the free throw when they got fouled. Wasn't able to get it to go in. And then uh, it's like they kind of got to standing and shooting. And Grambling is just smelling blood to water and just taking it to them. And we just come up with a walk, another turnover. So, you know, that's about 15 turnovers that we've had. So a turnover gives it right back to Grambling. And Brooks Donald Williams, you can tell she's just befuddled on that sideline, going but pretty much a new group out of the timeout. With uh, Edwards down low, they're in a zone defense here, Coach Vining, 2-3. Yeah, they dropped back into that the, the last possession uh, before. And they, they're going to try to get it inside right there at the top of the keys where they want it. Just an easy bucket for Justice Coleman, the senior. They start three seniors, two juniors, and that veteran... Uh, just the veteran leadership really has been the difference here. They have not. They never got befuddled at all when ULM made their run, but it hasn't happened on the other side. No, ULM just, they, 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 missed, they missed some shots. You know, they got them, missed them, and then just, you know, they had a couple of turnovers. It's kind of like it just affected them. You can see instead of the enthusiasm and the energy, you, you can see that they're just kind of uh, a little uh, hesitant to really do something. Foul was on Edwards, so we'll go back the other way as Edwards commits her second now, to personal. That's tough when you get a block on an inbounds pass from the side. You know, I know <laughs> Coach Donald Williams is wondering, you know, well, what else can we do wrong? Edwards was the last field goal made for ULM. That was at the 6.02 mark of the second quarter. There's an air ball three from Holt, and ULM will have the basketball. Yeah, you know, they're just trying to, to stop the dribble penetration, and it went back to this zone, and that's something that they talked about and worked on in practice the other day. And then now they're having trouble getting the ball in bounds. Yeah, that was a spot throw in because it went out of bounds. It wasn't after a basket. That's the 20th turnover for ULM. And again, that's on an inbound play. Driving against two defenders. Two defenders fall. But Justin Coleman will go to the free throw line. That was Grayson Williams and Whittington who tried to take a charge. And they give the foul to Whittington. 
You know, that's her third foul. Yeah, she was trying to step in and take that charge, but she didn't get there, obviously, quick enough in officials' eyes. And she got to hit in the face. Justice Coleman, the 5'10 senior from Baton Rouge. And yeah, she was going to the basket strong. And in foul trouble against Louisiana Tech. Nick Coleman, but she had seven points. 18 minutes, five points against Florida. And she was the leading scorer returning, of course, losing to Kyla Hill. Remember, she had a quadruple double, uh, quadruple double last year for Grambling. She did. That, that was uh, her third, uh, that was her third three pro tonight. 48 23, a 25 a point lead now. On a 25 to nothing run. This uh, certainly will be a learning experience for this young uh, Warhawks club. As the steal by Morrow, she can't finish it though, so no points off turnovers that time. Doesn't cost. Here's Self, who's fouled in the backcourt by Justice Coleman. And they are not uh, relenting that press. No, they're not. They were just all over Self, but you know the other players have got to give her something to do with it. They've got to make themselves available. You know she can't force it to them. They get double teamed. Somebody's open. They just have to go and, and again, make themselves available. How much you want to bet Coach uh, Brooks Donald Williams will have them working on the press tomorrow? Another turnover. This is three straight inbound plays that uh, there was a turnover. We couldn't get it inbounds. Rimsey has it. She'll circle the wagons. Four new Warhawks checked in a moment ago, including Van Schaik. She went to a 1 4 low and then was going to try to get a screen at the high post. And I get a screen and roll off of that, and then uh, they're just able to get up there and get a hand on it. They're just shattering the ball defensively, which is a great thing to do. Self, two seconds to shoot. And that one hit the backboard, hit the rim, but it stays uh, out. And here comes the Grambling Tigers. And that time it was Paramore who cleared it. See bench points as well, Grambling. 22 to 6 that a foul is called in the paint against Garrett Best Self. Yeah, well, they went back to the man to man that time, and the uh, Ramblin just moved the ball around to make sure to see what they were in, and then they went inside with it. Randy Washington checks in for the first time in the second half for Paramore. That's Self's third foul. Washington, the Monroe native, into a Grambling via Pensacola State College. At the free throw line, and the first is good. From Alexander, more time for the Andrea, daughter of DeAndre Alexander, a former ULM Warhawk under coach Mike Viney. Missed the free throw, but look at the effort to get that board by Morrow. And she's going to be rewarded with some free throws here, too. Just the aggressiveness. And effort for Grambling is just on a different level you know, than ULM. Yeah, you just we mentioned they just smell blood. They're they're going after it, and you know it. It seems like a long, long time ago, but the score was tied 23-23, but it was 4:01 left in the in the second quarter in the half. A lot of minutes without a score. Approaching 11 minutes since the last field goal for ULM, which was that. Edwards jumper at the free throw line was 602 to play. 830 since it's the last point. That was a free throw. 50-23 lead is its largest. 27 for Grambling. And they are not letting up with this 2-2-1 press. Kiera Crockett, almost a backcourt violation there, gets it to self. Now you're frantic with 18 seconds. Nearly a steal there by Moro. So Gramlin is getting a hand on every pass. And, you know, ULM wound up having to dribble it across. Usually you beat a press like that by passing it. You pass it and you get it down the floor a lot quicker. So a timeout call by ULM, which will become a media timeout as well. Grambling still on this incredible run, 27-0. Know any team, any league, any player, you control the whole scene. No one else goes deeper, that's a fact. One slide, one tap, is the ESPN app. 
27-0 run for Grambling and a 33-1 run since around that four-minute mark in the second quarter has ballooned their lead. As you see, 50-23. to We were tied at 23. That's the last 8.36 off the clock. And now a tie basketball gives the ball back to Grambling. You know, right now. And Scheich can't grab a hold of that basketball. Right, you know, right now, ULM, I, I, they just they can't even throw the ball in bounds. And it, but the people are they're moving. They're going to a spot, but it doesn't seem like they're going with a purpose. And Gramlin's going with a purpose. They're going after the ball. They're going after the, the defender. They're going to the basket. And, and I think ULM is just moving, but there's no kind of rhythm. Arabes Self just committed her fourth foul as ULM throwing a press at Grambling, that 1-2-1-1. One, one, one. And already bonus time here in this third quarter for Grambling. Well, Grambling on their press, you know, they're very active with their hands. And they've got, they've touched a lot of passes. And, you know, the, right then they were trying to press them. And then she just bumped her when she tried to blow by her. And then, and then she's unable to make that free throw. She's already had three tonight, though. Ariel Williams, a native of Memphis, Tennessee. The big school, Whitehaven High School, a great program in just about everything I coach I called her state championship game wow. four years ago for Whitehaven 5'9 senior now 50 to 23 is your score and again that press Brimsey double dribbles and turnover number 23 gives it back to Grambling so you cannot dribble you can't dribble through that press you've got to pass through the press and you know coach Murray is very, very proud of his team's defense right now. You know, you know they've worked on it. For them to be running it this well, they spent a lot of time on it, and he's got to be very proud of them. Team hasn't played in 10 days since that loss to Louisiana Tech. And uh, driving that time, Williams, she's fouled by Morgan Hill. Yeah, Morgan just reached instead of moving her foot. You, you know, you got to get your feet in front of him, and she just reached and uh, picked up the foul. Well, that was Brandy Washington who was fouled, so the Monroe native will head to the free throw line. One of two on the year. Prepped at Wachita Parish High School. So a homecoming for her. Make it two for three now for her tonight. And lead is 18. Well, she put some arch on that free throw. That could have that could have brought rain. Well, rather, the lead is uh, 29 now. 52-23. Seeing on numbers in my head. Took about eight of us to calculate a stat a while ago. Van Scheidt drives, trying to end this long run. Still can't do it. And here comes Grambling with the basketball. Pass ahead to Holt. Her shot no good. Offensive rebound by Alexander, and she's fouled. Just pure out-strengthening some of these young players for ULM. Yeah, she just took that ball away from Crockett. Her and Crockett had it together, and she just took it away from her. They're going to call oh, no. a travel on Alexander. Okay. And uh, I hear Dad back there not yeah. happy with the call. <laughs> yeah, I do too. Grimsey drives, can't finish, but she's fouled by Alexander and will go to the free throw line. So DeAndrea commits her second foul. And Brimsey. She was still wondering why she didn't get that one when they called the travel. Right. Brimsey one for five at the free throw line. And the free throw is no good. Still, the last two time ULM had a bucket was the 4-1 mark in the second quarter. Trying to end what is now a 29 to nothing run. And they still can't do it. ULM at the line now, 2 for 14. You know, it gets to be mental. It already has got to be mental. But, you know, but, but look how quick and, and uh, efficient that Gramlin's running there. They're going after it, and she pushed off, but she traveled. Morgan Hill, some good defense on her. Yeah, Morgan was up all over, and so she just used that forearm and the ball to swing it around. And see, nobody's breaking to the ball, and I know that's what they worked on. There's a foul and a drive to the bucket by Tyron Whittington. Both teams are in the bonus, so Whittington will go to the free throw line. 
Rambling outscoring ULM 16-0 here in the third quarter. Mitchell the 29-0 run. As that foul was... That's a fourth for Morrow. Right, on uh, Leah Morrow. Now it'll be Kyron Whittington's chance to try and end this, this remarkable scoring drought. You know, maybe this freshman can step up there and, and uh, knock it down. That breaks a 10-minute and <laughs> one-second drought <laughs> without a point. The last field goal was at the six-minute mark in that second quarter. So Whittington makes it, and they finally get off that 23 number. And the freshman nails them both. The freshman from Folsom, Louisiana, North Lake Christian High School. Or was it 10 minutes, 4.01 to 4? Yep. <laughs> The uh, Paramore checked back in for Holt for Grambling. Paramore has it knocked away from behind. Underneath shot was no good that time. By Ariel Williams. Now here's Brimsey. Spins, shoots, still can't get a field goal to go down. Crockett put back. It's no good. It is, uh, when it goes wrong, it just goes wrong for you, and it has today for ULM women. Now, you, you couldn't follow the hustle in. They no. both were really going after it. They just couldn't get it to go in. Screen is sets free Williams. Coleman now Paramore going to drive against Van Schaik. Good defense there, but right there to put it back is Alexander. Alexander. Getting a chance to play for the first time this year. She has four points, five rebounds. She just got in position for that in case it was a miss, and it wasn't. She put it back in. Rimsey clears some space. The shot goes down, but an offensive foul is called. And with three minutes to play in the third quarter, Grambling gets the possession back. The Monroe native Brandy Washington will check out of the ball game. And back in is Casey Chairs, 5'9 freshman from New Orleans. A great school country day where she prepped. There's a, a turnover. She couldn't quite handle that pass. Well, now, you know, we, we'd mentioned uh, kind of the body language a little bit earlier of, of ULM, but now they're, they're showing a little more quickness and a little more fight right now. So maybe they can... Uh, at least finish this thing strong and play the way they've, they've worked to play. And Shike should have been a kick basketball, but nonetheless, it'll stay with the Warhawks here. Good hustle by Ariel Williams. Well, Gramlin just going after everything. Pass everywhere, trying to get a hand on it, knock it forward, and just using their quickness. And, and they're, they're pretty physical, too. They'll put a hand on you without pushing, but they just stay in contact with you. The senior guards, you have Holt, Washington, Justice Coleman, and Ariel Williams, these senior guards are going to wreak some havoc in the SWAC this year. Whittington can't get the field goal to fall. Crockett can't get the putback. And now a breakaway for Grambling. Yeah, she, she cleared space, too. She pushed <laughs> off. Just as Coleman <laughs> got caught. <laughs> yeah, she did. <laughs> Yeah, Morgan was right with her, and she just kind of gave her that little forearm to give her a little space to go on to the basket. Coleman picked as a preseason first-team all-swack selection. She was second-team all-swack last year. Crockett breaks the press. Whittington, the freshman. Free throw line jumper, no good for Morgan Hill. This may be, uh, you know, after a game like this, Coach, there's different ways you can you can kind of treat it and we still got a long way to go in this one well you know of course there's a vast amount of talent difference in the two opponents but you talk about the way you felt after the or during and after the uh, Louisiana College game and you talk about this one and you, you see which one you want and and you've got to make your decision how you're going to play Casey chairs knocks down the three her second on the year another near turnover but a now it's called against uh, the Tigers, and you see that joy for Grambling. They know they are really putting yeah. it all together yeah. here tonight. You know, and Kier was like, she's a little lackadaisical with that. I mean, they're coming after everything. They're, they're putting a hand on you, getting a hand on the ball. Uh, you know, they'll try to score 100. 
Already a 2.20 scoring drought for ULM since they broke the 10-minute scoring drought. Brimsey at the line where she has struggled today. And good for her. She made that one. Brimsey now with six points and it's two for eight at the free throw line. Yeah, she shot that one like she's made every one she's ever shot. It, it looked great, but the one she's missed has looked good. They just didn't go in. And a lane violation against Donald Johnson. Oh, second chance here for Brimsey. It's not like they weren't shooting well from the line coming in. ULM was shooting 75% in the first two games. That's when you kind of know something, you, you know, it's just in your head a little bit. It is. It, it, it definitely is now. Brimsey nails the second. She has seven now as a team. ULM five now, six of 18 at the free throw line. Yeah, you know, ULM's now, you know, go pick them, pick them up, try to trap, but she gets over and she just blows by that trap. Break for Paramore. Three from Chairs. She made one just a moment ago. That one deflects out of bounds. He is 30. Or Grambling out of the swack. Making the short drive down by 20. Sadie Williams in the ball game, the freshman from Gonzalez, Louisiana, out of East Ascension. Lindsay, the JUCO transfer coming in from Tyler Junior College, where she had a really, really solid couple of seasons. Yep. Yeah. I know Coach Williams wants to, to move. That was a great pass she made. Where Crockett got an elbow in the face. She'll go to the free throw line. After being fouled that time, 61 seconds here in this third quarter. That's Forte's fourth foul. ULM with eight newcomers on this roster, including seven freshmen. And maybe the best of the bunch in Quake Chambers will not play this year, sitting out the season due to a torn ACL. She was kind of the jewel of the recruiting class, which was a great one for Brooks Donald Williams. He was all state. Well, no, she was really looking forward to, uh, to this recruiting class getting on the floor. And what we saw against Louisiana College is what she had envisioned coming. Certainly not tonight, but when you've got a bunch of new players, especially freshmen, uh, you're going to have you're going to have ups and downs. And unfortunately, this is one of her downs. But uh, Coach Murray's uh, Grambling squad has a lot to do with that, too. Absolutely. Floater in the lane won't fall. From Williams now, breakaway for Brimsey and McDowell. Brimsey will take it and lay it in. So some uh, positive momentum closing out this third quarter as they apply the pressure. See, Grambling was just so hard going after the offensive boards, and they hadn't had to worry about ULM scoring, so uh, they didn't get back. Kenya King couldn't hit it. Now uh, Grambling will reset and take the last shot of this third quarter. Morrow, screen, pull up 10 footer. No good. Crockett the rebound. Got a hurry. Five seconds and a travel by Brimsey. That was forced from some good defense. Yep. She turned around and thought she was going to get to the other end and get a shot off. And there was a player there, so she wasn't able to put it on the floor. It was Paramore who stepped right in front. Ariel Williams. Back in for King. 3.6 seconds remaining. See what Coach Freddie Murray calls out for his team here. And an offensive foul is called. Hitting the deck that time was Johnson. And it is on Johnson. Yeah, they were trying to rub. They were trying to rub him off of that uh, on that screen. Ramsey's pass intercepted by Johnson. Half court heave is good <laughs> by Ariel Williams. We've seen that before. <laughs> Hashtag SC top 10, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Wow. We've seen that before. When it's going good, it's going good. Ariel Williams. Oh, yeah. Tenemos que correr.
Something special about this uh, bucket to our left as Ariel Williams nails a half-court shot to end the third quarter, and that just really surmises the first three quarters of this ballgame. <laughs> it, it does. Well, actually, starting in the second quarter and, and, the, and the entire third quarter, it was uh, everything has gone Gramlin's way and not much at all has gone uh, ULM's way. But uh, you got to hand it to Gramlin's causing a lot of that to happen, too. They're still looking at this to see if it was off in time. And whether maybe the clock started on time. The, yeah, the clock. I think that's, that's the big thing. Yeah, the clock might not have started on time. But what I saw, the light came on right before it went in. So they're I, trying to, to maintain whether or not. Right. Because I saw her with her, her, her cell phone out as her stopwatch to time it. So they're, dis they're discussing it, so we'll. This one still says 57 to 30. Our officials see them on the screen. Michelle Bennett is the crew chief of the bunch. So it is going to count. So it is good. And it's 60 to 30 is Ariel Williams. Now two of five from three, 16 points, or rather 13 points. Well, they were really discuss discussing it with Coach Murray. He had he had some comments or questions. Comments, questions, smart remarks. His team's up by 30, has to be pretty happy. Appreciate uh, Rochelle Bennett, who just gave us uh, the explanation. Coach, you want to? Well, she, she just said that we're going to make sure that the clock started properly. That was, uh, that was what they stopped to look at. Grayson Williams, the freshman point guard, has it to Whittington. The senior Crockett comes out to get it. And underneath the bucket, a three-second violation called on Hannah Edwards. And that turnover is the 28th of uh, the night for ULM. The inbounds. Crockett got a fingertip on it, and now a collision. Wow, that is a collision. And, of course, uh, we know Edwards is dealing with a back. It's Holt on the ground for Grambling. Well, she, she was on the, on the floor, and somebody was rolling over, and she was trying to get them off. But it uh, looks like she's hurting her side or chest. Something is hurting. Maybe her stomach she's holding. Mm. But her back is what has been her problem, as you mentioned. And so anything, any jar, uh, a jarring blow would have hurt her. Let's take a look. And... She's obviously in a lot of pain well, right fell, now. Maybe yeah. she fell on the way in. She and got a knee to the head a little bit too from Alexis Holt. It was kind of a double or triple whammy. Yeah, it, 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 it looked like maybe her and uh, DeAndrea was running up there together trying to get it, and she just stumbled and fell, and then got hit in the head, as you said, with the knee. But she's hold, she's holding her hip right now. Such a special young lady. What a career she had in Birmingham. And she's got a bright future ahead of her. Hope she. Mm, you just feel for. Her. Well, they're having to go. They're going to look at what we looked at now yeah. to, to see if they can figure out what all happened. Because uh, now they've got to sort it all out and make this call. She was already sort of tripping on the way down and. Mm, yeah, that was, I, I didn't see that earlier. I was watching the ball, but on the, yeah. on the replay we saw, it, and that was some great camera work from uh, from our crew to get that over there, and the officials are really using them tonight, too. Well, num number one, it was great hustle all the way around. And we'll see if the officials deem uh, anything nefarious. Marley Vidal, Christopher Soseda, and Rochelle Bennett. Our officials getting some time as you're watching this game here on ESPN Plus. It's all a big uh, deal today. So the uh, explanation he coach. said the call on the floor stands. So it was a, I think they must call a foul on, uh, on Edwards. So Edwards, boy, that's a brutal foul on her. 
Holt. Now chairs with it. Spin move, but a block. Oh, a. Uh, she went to the basket. To offensive foul. Yeah. Donna Grayson Johnson. Williams. What? Grayson Williams steps in, takes the, the charge. She just went in there and put a hip into her. She was going to the basket it, either way. Wasn't a flop involved there, that's no, for sure. Didn't it? You're right. Mason Williams had those five assists in the game on Sunday. Whittington lobbed down low. Good uh, back seal by Brooks, and she missed the bunny, but she puts it back up and in. Zach Randolph would be proud. <laughs> <laughs> the Zebo Zaybound there. Get your own miss. You know, she worked so hard to, to get it and then didn't miss the first shot, but she continued to work and, and made it count anyway. You know, kind of resetting from going back to the beginning and some of the things we were looking for, which was that five guard set. Look for rambling, which can go either way for you when you want to play your post players. Well, it, it can, but you know, those, those quick hands that uh, the Gramlin's had has, has really paid off on defense. Going's going to pull up and shoot the three. Mm, it's a good look. Backside rebound, no good for Kiara Crockett, but she is fouled. One of those contact finishes that were going on Sunday just are not going today. We'll take that shot from Goins any time. And his final 8.30, you just want something positive going into your road game on Saturday at Northwestern State. Yeah, she, she was a, a much more confident with a wide open three than in a contested uh, layup or pull up. Rocket hits the first free throw. Kiera, the senior, five points and seven rebounds so far today. Now she's one of the ones that's hit some free throws tonight. That's her third one. And two double doubles to finish the year last year. And now Crockett comes away with a steal <laughs> missed by Whittington. There's got to be a lid on that bucket. <laughs> uh, you know, Kiera could have shot it herself, and she gave it up. Alexander got Whittington. It was a, a kind of a, a rough sequence there, and Whittington got a maybe an elbow in the face there, but the foul was on Whittington. That's her fourth foul. 8.21 to go in this ball game. Grambling had a 29 to nothing run to break this game open and stretch from midway through that second quarter to Midway through the third quarter. That drought. Well, you know, that, that, that kills you on the scoreboard, but it also gets you mentally and you, it just drains you physically. And, and then they've, they've kept playing. They're really trying. And I like that Crockett just taking it to the basket on the other end. Teaching moment here for Freddie Murray. Timeout on the floor. Grambling on top 60 to 33 here at Bent Ewing College. Women's basketball team here at ULM. They're, that's not actually them, believe it or not, <laughs> over there in the their cutouts. We need to get a Mike Binding cutout before this yeah, year's over. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure they'll be working on that. It's where your banner is that they haven't put back. <laughs> You're 402. We gotta get that back up. I'm worried about it. Rocket has it knocked away out of bounds. So we'll she, stay with ULM. Yeah, she was trying to take it to the basket. She was wanting to make something happen, and they they cut her off, and then she. Uh, was able to get rid of it, but they knocked it out of bounds. Final 748 of this one, Grambling by 27 in a five second violation will be called. That's turnover number 30 for the Warhawks in this one. You know, that's a, I know that's four just on an inbounds pass. That's, uh, that, that's tough to overcome. Only one day to prepare for Northwestern State on the road on Saturday. This might be one you just flush, you know, just take a sledgehammer to the tape and move on. But there's a lot of things they can learn from, especially going up against the press. It is. And, you know, you watch right now, Gramlin has really, really run their offense. They've done a lot of cutting, uh, like a five-man weave. Uh, all of them's outside and just cutting it when they get a screen they go to the basket and try to suck the defense in now ULM's going to try to move and get something going instead of just ducking their head and going to the basket and somebody's in the wrong place Goins with five to shoot and she has it stolen away just a mess of a possession there as Paramore takes it contact offensive foul good hustle 
for Grayson Williams and she takes a charge. She's uh, got that down to an art. She got in front of her, but um, but Paramore is just aggressive on defense. I mean, she's just all over with those hands, trying to get a hand on that ball, and she's got on a lot of them tonight. The youngest teams in the country, this ULM Warhawks team. Lob into Diamond Brooks, three by Goins, way off the mark. She made her first, which made nine straight games dating back to last season with a three for Whitney. She's been a little cold since that first quarter. Holt gets the screen. Alexander, Paramore open for three. And the rebound tracked down by Crockett. That's her ninth rebound. You know, Paramore had been, been very active cutting at uh, that time. She just pulled up to shoot that three, but she's uh, she can do it all. Goins had that high-low option with Kira Crockett. Freshman See, Grayson Grammy, Williams. Yeah, Grammy's back in the zone now. Nobody's breaking up to the high post. You've got to have someone break into that high post. Grayson Williams for three with three on the clock, and she knocks down the triple. Grayson Williams with her first three as a collegiate player. That one makes it a 60-36 to 36 ball game. One of the things that Coach Brooks Donald Williams was excited about about coming out of Arkansas is she thought felt good about how they at least were able to score against a, a superior talented team like the Razorbacks. Yeah, they uh, see, they're ranked 16th, 17th in the nation, and they went in there and and uh, like I said, they were able to get, put some points up. And they didn't expect to beat them, I don't think. And then the, the worst part about it, she was so pleased because they hadn't been able to be on the floor as a team uh, but two or three times. So now, you know, <laughs> they've doubled or tripled that times to be on the floor, but they're still not where they want to be or where they will be. We give with Thanksgiving that they had their first really full practice. Loader no good for Holt as the shot clock was expiring. She just, just fought her way to get that rebound. And we'll go to the free throw line. I'm sold on these senior guards for Freddie Murray. And it's Holt, Coleman, Paramore, and then Ariel Williams. We were looking at the plus minuses during that last break, and Ariel Williams, the best plus minus at plus 29 today. Free throw no good for Holt. You know, that, that's, <laughs> that, that's this example of, of their aggressiveness. She, she got to the basket, shot it, wasn't able to get it to go, and then just goes uh, uh, under the basket and gets it again. So she's not able to make the free throws. <laughs> and then the Monroe native, Brandy Washington, falling down, gets that one to fall. She just fought her way in there from, from the free throw line, was able to put it up. And the offensive glass, good seeing in the distance back there. You see behind the bench for ULM, Hannah Edwards up and jogging. That is really nice to see. Whittington way out front. Shot clock winding down again. Crockett, Grayson Williams. Back to Great Crockett. Pass. But she can't finish. Rebound put back. She's got uh, double figure rebounds now. McDowell, no. And a foul will be called on Alexander. Sending a Crockett to the free throw line. You know, Crockett tried to shoot that one before she came down while she was still up in the air, and uh, Alexander just bumped her, and uh, she, she's a lot uh, heavier, and, of course, Crockett fell and got the attention of the officials. Crockett has five points and ten rebounds. Free throw is off the mark. ULM today shooting just 36% at the free throw line. Eight out of 23. He splits the pair, so the senior Crockett with six points. And checking into the ball game is the freshman Morgan Hill. You know, Crockett, those six points, she's got four of them's been from the free throw line. So, you know, fortunately for her anyway, she's she was able to get those. And it's awful physical around that basket, even though we talked about the guards. They're playing a lot of guards. It's, it's physical in there for uh, anybody at this time. Williams has it here, guarded by Goins. They are switching on most of those screens. Set by Grambling. Shot clock down to 10. No time to rush or not any reason to rush. 
And an offensive foul will be called, a moving screen on Alexander. You know, I've seen more of those so far this early this year. An awful lot of, of illegal screens. I don't know if that's something that they're emphasizing this year or. or I want to say last year that was one of the things talked about earlier, the point of emphasis, you know, making sure you are set. Mm -hmm. We well, you know they've peeled off of those screens, several of them uh, tonight, and it's, it's been an awful lot of fouls. Whittington trying to find Goins down there in the low post. 351 left in this one. See, they've had trouble getting it on the inbounds. They're in that zone, so you just got to break to the open spot. And uh, Goins did, but was unable to finish. Rebounding edge has gone to Grambling today. They've out rebounded ULM by six right now. See, they're running a lot of motion right now. Whittington. Sent hold to the floor. That's her that's fifth. Number five on Kyron Whittington. 5'9 freshman from North Lake Christian in Folsom, Louisiana. Kyron, you know, in this day and age, you're, you only play one sport or maybe two sports, you know, focusing on those. She played four sports in high school, Coach. She ran track. She played volleyball. She played softball for a couple of years, and then basketball. Well, she's just she's just an all-around athlete, and you know she's going she's going to do well here uh, for for Coach Donald Williams. Goins in the low post. Back out to McDowell. So this is when it would be good to have uh, Edwards in the post, a, a big a big target to get the ball to against this zone. Rimsey can't get the shot to go down, and Grambling has it these final three minutes. Well, this one, Grambling now 250 away from their first one of the season after losing at Florida and at Louisiana Tech. They're still running their offense. You know, they're moving, and that's what uh, I think that's what Coach Murray called them about a while ago earlier to, to make them run that offense. Shot is good by Justice Coleman. Together a really good game. Nine points for her. Four rebounds. And that's with battling foul trouble much of this ball game. So they're running a one four low to try to flatten out that zone and get something moving. But they, they're still making it tough on them. And going inside to Kiara. Grayson Williams tracks it down. Seven to shoot, coach. They're just making it tough on them. Everything to, to make every pass is tough. Goins loves the corner, and she nails her second three of this ball game. Goins into double figures. Five were in double figures on Sunday, and Goins with 155 to go at the time she hit it, the first in double figures for ULM today. Well, that, like I said, that is her shot, and it's a big difference from the other day. You know, when ever all 12 people that played scored, and then they've been having trouble just finding the bucket today. Rimsey can't get the shot to fall, but she will go to the free throw line. Going forward, every team that ULM plays will watch this tape and see that press and how it worked. And I think that's the big thing you come away with from this one is uh, how they handled or, or did not handle the press yes, today. The, the press, just active hands, and uh, they will, uh, they're going to see this a lot, I'm afraid. See Brimsey three for nine at the free throw line. And probably Coleman checking out for the final time today. Coach Murray's gone deep into his bench today as well. You know, Brimsey has an opportunity now to add to hers. That was a beautiful stroke. No excuse for her to be three of nine, no. now four of ten. And she knows that. Everything looks right. It just hasn't been going in. Rimsey now in double figures joining Goins. Four for ten from the line, four rebounds. Now she looked like she could make 20 in a oh, row. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's such a mental thing. So here, this is with their guard, uh, Whitney's having to come out and guard a guard at the point, which is not something that she's used to. And now they're just going to try to run some clock. In a pretty low-scoring fourth quarter, ULM outscoring Grambling 12-4. And now 
An aggressive drive into the bucket. That was uh, Brandy Washington trying to get in there and get her another bucket. The Monroe native uh, back to the free throw line. Nice homecoming for Brandy Washington today. Now she, she put some arch on her free throws. Three of four at the line so far today. Prep to watch Ida Parrish. <laughs> that is, that is a, a rainbow free throw. <laughs> You know, it, it's just however you're comfortable. Well, and, and what worked for her, and it and it has been working for her. You can go granny if you want to. Do you have anybody shoot granny style? No, no. High basketball on the floor, good hustle. Both teams for ULM Morgan Hill was there. And ULM can't even win a possession error right now. <laughs> It's been that type of day, 65-42. Rambling closing again on their first win of the 2020-2021 season. It'll be uh, a tough team to mess with in the SWAC this year. Foul on Morgan Hill that time. Arnisha Johnson, who has set the world on fire when she came in in the first half, and Gonna give her credit. There's the score by quarters, and of course it was the mid-second quarter to mid-third quarter run that really was uh, the tail of the tape. You see the 44-17 difference in those two quarters in a 29-nothing run. One out of two for her, and she has nine points. Two made threes for. Miss Johnson. Well, she found a way, every way to score a free throw, a two and a three. Goins on the drive in the lane. Couldn't get the shooter's roll that time. Hill, the freshman, the rebound. She nearly threw it away, but he comes up with it. She loves that spot. Grayson Williams, that one a little bit too strong, though. And Grambling can run out the well, clock. They'll just look like they will run it out now. Folks had traveled over. I-20, the short drive over. And giving their team uh, some applause. And 66-42, Coach, uh, you know, let's uh, talk for both teams. For Coach uh, Freddie Murray, how you feeling? Well, you know, he's feeling great. You know, everything he worked on uh, worked to perfection. The press, uh, the man-to-man the -man defense, his zone defense, and they ran their offense well and scored. Uh, he's feeling great. And for Brooks Donald Williams. Well, you know, she's down. She's really, really down right now. Uh, the press affected them. She didn't think he would. They worked on it extremely hard. They couldn't get some shots to go. And they just kind of got down on themselves. And that's probably what she'll be most disappointed with, that they didn't, they weren't able to just to sustain that energy that they had the other night. Coming up next at Northwestern State for ULM on Saturday this weekend. Grambling stays on the road against UAB. So, for Mike Viney and our producer, Wayne Gentry, I'm Chris Harris saying so long from Monroe, Louisiana, where your final score, Grambling 66, ULM 42. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.